a quest, Honorable Gabriel Tongoy. What is your point of order, uh, Leader of Majority? Honorable Speaker, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I came running from the office. So if I punch Honorable Speaker, it's because I came running. Uh, you know, I'm a stickler to the rules and procedures of the House. <coughs> and I was listening as Honorable Ken Chonga made his contribution and challenged on a point of order by the Honorable KJ, he asserted that he had not used the term lies. Honorable Speaker, we must be a house that adheres to our own rules and procedures, because the Honorable Ken Chonga asserted that the kind of lies being said to us by the leader of majority and his deputy in the Honorable Speaker, there is something called statement of fact. The Honorable Ken Chonga has been in this house long enough to know our rules. Therefore, he cannot, on the basis of a, stand, a point of order raised by Honorable KJ, assert that he did not use the term lies. He actually stated that the kind of lies being told to us, and you know, we were not speaking to Ken Chonga, we were speaking to the country, and we were not telling lies. That language is unparliamentary. We must not allow the Honorable Ken Chonka to get away with it. Because it is, we are degrading the dignity of this house by allowing members to utter careless statements without substantiating, without giving facts, give us a statement of fact. What is it that the leader of majority said or his deputy said that was untrue? Honorable members do not tell lies. The Honorable Member uh, for Kilifi North cannot be telling lies. You had He's an Honorable Member honorable of Chonga, Parliament. Let him finish prosecuting. Honorable you. Speaker, I want to ask Honorable Speaker if the Honorable Ken Chonga will not apologize and withdraw that term, Honorable Speaker. I would want to move, Honorable Speaker. On standing order number 107108, that I ask you if the Honorable Ken Chonga does not apologize and withdraw, that you find him to be grossly disorderly, and I shall be moving to name him Honorable Speaker, because we must restore the dignity of this House, Honorable Speaker. As I contributed, I asked, asked all of us to be patriotic enough and to be leaders. There are things you can say in funerals, there are things you can say in rallies, but you cannot say in such an honorable house, honorable speaker. And I know it is exciting for those who are, not, don't, uh, who are politicians and not leaders to want to say things that will excite the masses, honorable speaker. Honorable speaker, if you can also protect me from the member for Busia, and I keep teaching our honorable speaker, allow me to keep guiding the honorable member for Busia. When you find what I'm saying is unpalatable, you went to school to be able to stand in your position articulate your issues, don't shout from your seat. You can shout from markets in Busia, but not in this house. Honorable Speaker, this house we articulate, we debate. It, it is a debating chamber, not a shouting chamber. I know it's common to shout in uh, some places in Busia, but not in this house. Honorable Speaker, I would beg that you do find, require Honorable Chonga to withdraw and apologize. Failure to which Honorable Speaker, we shall be moving to name him. Honorable Chong, I have just been able to substantiate from the confirm from the clerk that he, you did in fact uh, say that the kind of lies by the leader of majority and the deputy <laughs> and went on to allege, allege and I've checked that with them. So I'll just bring to your attention uh, order, standing order number 91, responsibility for statement of fact. The member shall be responsible for the accuracy of any facts which they allege to be true and may be required to substantiate. Again, when you were informed that you had made those remarks, you said that it was not in fact true. Uh, and now it's been confirmed by the Hansard that it was. And then, uh, and if you do not convince me, then I will move to standing order number 107 and finding you uh, liable for disorderly conduct. I'll give you a minute to respond to that. Madam Speaker. I regret to say that I think I was not understood well 
the statement that was made by the leader of majority and his deputy is that by virtue of the war in Israel and the Hamas, the prices... The prices... Songa, uh, I was giving you an opportunity either to apologize, withdraw the remarks, then you can proceed. But you're making it worse by restating again, are you disputing what is on the handset? Yes or no, Honorable Chonga? I cannot dispute what is on the hazard, okay. but I'll stand then by my word. Chonga, then we will let you sit down. You can leave the house and confirm and then come back. Okay, Madam Speaker. And then we can decide your, your fate in another 10 minutes when you have confirmed. Proceed. No, no, you are disorderly. Honorable Chonga, I have not given you the mic. Hold on. Honorable Chonga, would you like... Honorable Chonga. Honorable Chonga. Honorable Chonga, you did not have the mic and you have proceeded to speak. Then you will just be held that you keep away from the house for the next two sittings. Let us proceed. The Honorable... I think it was... Uh, uh, member for Nakur... Oh, it was, a, it was the Honorable West. Member for Narok... West. West. Yes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I want to thank you for giving he me this opportunity... He has not begun, then you can make your point of order. Let him make... ...to contribute uh, to the President's speech. Madam Speaker, uh, I was in this House when the President was addressing to the nation, and in fact seated where I'm seated today. And I had the opportunity of not just be listening to him, but even looking and reading his body language. And I was so convinced that uh, the president really was aspiring hope to Kenyans. And the president really.